Welcome to Modern Art Blitz. I'm your host, Matt Gleason. Today we've got three amazing artists. We're gonna start off with Peter Hess. Peter, you know, now I said you were an amazing artist. Do you consider yourself an artist or a painter? Uh, both, I suppose. Is there a uh, uh, there contradiction? Delineate, well, you know, some, some people wanna just hone it in that you, you, you really privilege your painting. Do well, you I, I've done, you know, I make prints and I paint and I've done sculpture and uh, so I've sort of done it all. I've gone everywhere from uh, 2D to 2.5D to 3D. <laughs> no performance art though. No performance no, art. That's none of that now. Um, so uh, how long have you been a painter? Well, uh, I've been painting, you know, not I suppose since I mean since, since I was a kid, I was, you know, when you uh, every kid in school, you know, you draw those battle scenes and stuff when you're sitting in class, you know, and uh, eventually, you know, I turned into paintbrushes and it just didn't stop. You know? And you had formal training? Uh, no formal art training. I didn't go to art school. You didn't go to I art didn't, school. Didn't go to college either. You didn't go one to one year of college. Which which well, college? Cal State Northridge. You went to Cal State Northridge for a year and just said, I'm, I'm out of here. Well, I had other priorities. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, um, so tell me, uh, you're painting in acrylic. Yep. Have you always painted in acrylic? Uh, I've dabbled in, in oil, but uh, they take a little more patience, I think, and uh, I can't wait for the stuff to dry. And I, I like, you know, acrylic has a little plasticky look that I kind of like, you know. So. And uh, and, and uh, do you consider it to be? the medium of the times, so to speak? Acrylic? Acrylic, you know, our plastic era. Well, I, I don't think I've thought that deeply about it. I mean, there are, <laughs> there are, you know, there are a limited number of choices. You can paint in oils or acrylics or watercolors or gouache. Gouache, a, there's always gouache. And you have painted in gouache, right? I have, yes. Yeah? You, don't, you don't like that? I much? like it okay. It cracks a little bit sometimes, and it's basically an opaque watercolor. It's fine. Your current series, at Coagula Curatorial is um, lumber. Lumber, timber, uh, the afterlife of trees, basically. So, so, so delve into that a little deeper. Why did you pick this? I mean, it's a pretty mundane, it's almost one of the most basic things there are in civilization. Well, yeah, I was, uh, I was looking to strip down my work quite a bit. Uh, I had been using a lot of tiles and, and uh, various things. I, I really wanted to strip down my work to uh, basic painting and I wanted a basic subject. And uh, wood is something, you know, when it's, when it's alive, when there are trees, people paint it, people, it's inspiration, it provides oxygen, it's... Uh, shade. Uh, shade. Uh, and then we turn it into like this building material that surrounds us everywhere we are. I have a painting called uh, Cradle to Coffin, you know, which kind of sums up. Cradle the, to you know, Coffin. You build a cradle out of uh, wood, you build the coffin lid out of wood. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's where it encases us for. Yeah, and I've spent a lot of time in, you know, artist studios. I mean, the skylights, the skies, or, or the, uh, the timbers, you know, the, uh, it just seemed to be you know, this, I couldn't think of a parallel for wood, you know, something that is as ubiquitous in our lives as, as wood. It's everywhere and yet it's dead. Yeah. It was alive, it's dead. Mm -hmm. um, so we're looking at a lumber pile here. Mm -hmm. uh, how big is this piece? It's uh, 48 by 36. And uh, what were you going for here? I mean, there's almost a heroic stature here. Yeah, um, I think, I, I tried to get across the idea of a, a sort of imperious tower and the, uh, the, the populace at the base, you know, or something like that. Uh -huh. um, it's a big structure. Yeah. And then you've got just a hint of a sky, I want to say a skyscape, not a landscape. Have you, have you painted landscapes in the past? Well, I've done everything. I've done everything from landscapes to uh, I've done figures I've, to, uh, <laughs> well, you have to find what you, what you want to do. But as I said, I wanted to strip this down. You, know, you wanted to strip really it down. Something really basic. Okay. So, because some of these are just the wood and some have just a, a little hint of a nature. Okay, yeah, now this, this is cradle to coffin, right? This is cradle to coffin. And, yeah. and uh, this, is, this is all new work too, right? It's all new work from the last uh, year and a half, yeah. And, it's, and, and even the floor, 
you have a cradle on a coffin lid on a wood floor. Right. So it just is, is as utilitarian as it gets. Pretty much. Pretty yeah. basic, yeah. So, so I don't want to make it too heavy, you know, but it is heavy. You know, you, you've so got some heavy I, undertones that, that we'll get to in a minute, but, but I mean, a cradle on a coffin pretty much, I mean, you know, the, it, it reminds me of the, um, the, the, is it Peggy Lee, the song, Is That All There Is? <laughs> you know, is that all there is to life? A, ca a, ca a cradle in a coffin? Well, uh, it's a great song. Yeah. Is that <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Peggy Lee fan, but uh, um, I don't know. Is that is, all is, there is? is that I mean, all one there of the is? things about the, the trees, you know, when I was, uh, I kept thinking about this idea of the afterlife of trees. You know, I mean, they, they have this life and then uh, uh, utilitarian life afterwards. You know? And they're, they're not there to experience it. They're dead. It's kind of like Napoleon. We all still talk about him, but he's, he's not here to enjoy that. Yeah, so it has a, a counterpart with sort of possibly our afterlife. You know, our after. after. It's a, it is a meditation on the afterlife. You're just using these other formerly living objects in, in our world right. that we've, we've managed to find a way. Because we don't do a lot with, there's a lot of carcasses that we don't do much with, you know, but we do a lot with wood. Trees, a.k.a. trees. Yeah. <laughs> You, the transformation has been complete when the tree becomes wood, you know. So, so and uh, they they have no say in it. No, well, that you know, and there's nobody, and there's not even a trees rights groups. I guess there's tree huggers though. There's you know, but it has to be kind of a special tree, right? A thousand year old tree, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, for anybody to care, you know. You know, trees are grown as crops now. You know, it's the the old idea of like forestry and and all that. That's those days are gone. Well. You know, they don't, they don't just go to the wild re forest. They, just, they, grow, yeah. they, grow, they grow them as crops now. So, so don't, don't get too, uh, you don't have to get too uh, environmentalist. This is not an environmentalist statement, right? No, it's not. It's not. So let's, let's, let's move on because we, we have the cradle coffin. Okay, so now we see what, what are they building with the former, the, the, the afterlife of the trees? Well, they can be put to uh, positive purposes and nefarious purposes and... Uh, in this instance, I think it's a, it's a nefarious purpose, uh, reminiscent of a uh, uh, possibly a comp concentration camp or a uh, detention camp or something. You wanted you wanted to give the thing of this ominous guard tower. Right. I mean, it's it's all done in cyberspace now, so you know they don't, we don't have the necessarily have the guard towers anymore. But but you've got you've got the the view is from maybe in the barracks, looking out to the to the. Uh, um, you can infer tower. that, yeah. It's, 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 you you want to keep it ambiguous. I do, a bit. Why do you want to keep it ambiguous? Well, because the more, more specific you get, the less whole application it has, the less uh, people can infer and, and take from it and bring to their own experience. You want to do that. Now, you've done some great painting, okay? D despite the heavy subject, or, or maybe, maybe because of it, you, you know, the painting application is, is pretty serious. Do you compose these? How do, how do you compose these from, from memory? Are you, use, are you sketching from existing guard towers? Well, it varies. Sometimes I'll, I'll uh, I do have structure, basically, a, a line drawing, and then the interior is sort of uh, expressionistic, you know. I'll, the, uh, the actual wood grain, wood grain. Yeah, yeah. the wood grain is your expression. Yeah, Most yeah. people, when they think of expression as painting, they're like, "Come on, slap it around." But you're well, I'm a repressed expressionist. <laughs> so, uh... so, so uh, <laughs> you're letting it all out now, though, right? <laughs> so, in, um, in a contained way. Yeah, and again, this is this is a, a nice size painting. How how big is this? Well, this one is, uh, I think, thirty by. 30 by 40? 24. Th th 30 this particular one? Okay, 30 by 24? Yeah. And this, now you have another guard tower in the show. I don't think we have a picture of it, but you actually have like a wood, you actually used actual wood to make a smaller piece, right? I did. To, to, to make the window with the, with the, with the thing. So, it's so the you're, same composition. Yeah, you're, you're, you're not afraid of, of, uh, of pushing it a little here. You know, you've got paintings on paper, paintings on canvas or panel, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a, it's a great show uh, with this unified theme. Um, and yet each piece has its own, you know, idiosyncratic way of looking at it, different lighting, different colors. Um, maybe if we get the next one, you'll be able to see the variance in, in colors here. Okay, now this is definitely probably the most um, uh, referential piece in the show as far as a specific uh, image we all think, even though it's without the bodies, this does have that, that sort of barracks. It uh, does have that implication and, uh, but I go to a lumber yard at 
in Pasadena, and they have similar structures where they pile wood. So. Okay, okay. <laughs> now you're not denying it, but you're I'm all, not you're, you're, denying you're, it. Okay, but you are saying it's, like it's it, open to interpretation. It's open to interpretation. So, so, um, and even with the blue, I mean, that's not supposed to be optimistic, is it? You just wanted light. It's it's a compositional. It's just a compositional. And, okay, and, okay. You know. So, um, and and. and any reference on this? Was this drawn from memory? Were you, were you, were you, did you go to the lumber yard to sketch this? No, in this particular case, I, I looked at some photographs, some existing photographs, and I ex extended uh, the composition skyward. And okay. And um, you are an LA native, Southern California? No, born in Holland. You were born in Holland. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so how long have you been in the United States? Most of my life, uh, yeah. we moved when I was five years old. Five years old. So, yeah. so where, where did where did you go to high school? In the valley, where? Uh, James Monroe High School. You went to James Monroe High School. Mm -hmm. So, 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 tell us about when you wanted to change the name of James Monroe High School. Yeah, that was uh, a few friends of mine. We got got the scheme to change the name of a, the school from James Monroe High School to Marilyn Monroe High School. <laughs> And and how, how did that, how did that, is it, it, did, did you succeed? We did not succeed. But you succeeded in making a bit of a fuss, right? Yeah, I was on an interview show, George Putnam, and uh, so, it got in a few newspapers, and even in, we got a newspaper from London that carried the story. And, well, um, that's, a, that's, a, that's a fun high school story. Perhaps your first uh, conceptual artwork? Sure. <laughs> take, it, take it where you can get it. So let's continue because because uh, I want to show the color. The color palette definitely changes as we move through these. And this one especially. Now this is called rosewood. Rose cross. Rose cross. So you've got a cross in there, and again, it's somewhat ambiguous and just a bit of a skyscape. But but the red here is this based on a specific uh, type of wood you've encountered? No, it's. Uh, I mean, I thought it was interesting that uh, the strongest symbol in uh, Western civilization is two planks of wood, you know, the cross. And uh, I just kind of went all in on, on the red and... Uh, was it more of like a sun, I mean, obviously just a sunset kind of lighting or, or something, yeah? Or a conflagration. A conflagration, oh, okay, <laughs> now we're getting somewhere. Um, and how dark does it get? How do you mean? <laughs> I'm a conceptual. It's yeah. dark. I, I was under the influence of Leonard Cohen, I think, when I did oh, this. Oh, oh, the new, the new stuff or the old stuff? Uh, dress rehearsal rag. Oh my uh, God, that's that's as dark as he ever got. Yeah. That's that's one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's on his first album. Second. Second album? Yeah. It is. Okay. I'll songs of love and hate. Songs of songs of love and hate. You're right. Okay, okay. So so, uh, did you ever meet Leonard Cohen? Uh, no. No. So, did you ever see him live? Many times. Okay, okay, okay. You, did you travel to see him live or always always here? I saw him over decades at uh, when he came to Los Angeles. When he came, okay, I, I, a couple times too, like the Wiltern Theater he played a couple times and the Nokia Theater. Mm -hmm. uh, always great, always great. Um, you know, he kind of, his death kind of ushered in the new era too, wouldn't you say? In what sense? Well, you know, he died on election, you know, he died oh, on election oh, day. Yeah. <laughs> Things have changed. He was lucky. I you know? Think. Well, get ready for the future. It is murder. <laughs> so, um, uh, do you do you see this as a as, as as a hearkening image? Are you looking Are you looking back or forward? In this image, yeah. I'm neither. It's a uh, composition that shows wood. <laughs> you're, not, you're not. You're not. You're, you're going to let us all just bring to it what we want. What we want. Yeah. There's no no apo apocalypse or anything. Inferred. You know. Inferred, but, but our own psyche. Because that's kind of the postmodern, um, you know, the postmodern uh, exit strategy is always, well, whatever you bring to the painting, of course, that's, that's, what, that's what we like. But you're, you're, not, you're not even going to give us that much? No, I don't want to hem myself in. No, no, no yeah. just, okay. So um, where else have you exhibited in Southern California besides my gallery? Uh, well, I did a solo show quite a while ago at the... Uh, Municipal Art Gallery and at uh, Copland Gallery. I used to at show Copland that. Gallery? Yeah, yeah. That became Copland Del Rio. Now they've yeah. relocated to uh, the Pacific Northwest, you know? Yeah. Right. And when did you show at the, the Municipal Art Gallery? That was in uh, 88, I think. Oh, jeez. A solo show there. Jeez. And, uh, 
And did you, did you show also at uh, Avenue 50 Studios? Yes. You've worked, you've worked with them? Yeah. Because Kathy Gallegos. Kathy Gallegos came to, came to, she came to your opening at Coagula the other night. Yeah. yeah. So, well, cool. Um, did, was this the climax? That was the climax, the climactic piece. Was it? The, the Rose Cross was the climactic piece. It, okay. it, we, we built to a crescendo and, and we survived. We did. <laughs> so, um, Peter Hess, your show at Coagula Curatorial runs through August, is it the 13th? August 13th. You tell me. August 13th, 2017. I hope I, I, hope I remember to open the door. Uh, through, uh, Peter has a show, solo show, at Coagula Curatorial through August 13th, 2017, if you're watching the archive of our live broadcast. Peter, thanks for joining me Thank on Modern so Art Blitz. We'll be back right after this.